That was pretty crazy, huh? So there's gonna be some things here that will show us that, hey, this could happen. And it's not like it's, oh, this is a surprise. This is something that never happens. This happens all the time. And let's go ahead and put this in our brain. This is a perfect example of something that we can go, boom, hey brain, focus on this, remember this, remember what happened here. This is something that could happen to me in this type of situation. And that is how we're gonna learn. This is the whole point of these after action reviews is that we focus on these things and have our brains remember them. So right here, I'm gonna do a scene survey, scene size up, however you wanna do it, you know, BSI for my crew and I. And uh, what we're gonna be doing here is looking at some of the stuff here that is obvious. And we have hazards, hazards, hazards. We have cars lined up. So we have people possibly wanting to come out. Now that's what's happening in this video, but this is what we see. Cars lining up, people wanna creep through, people will let them creep through big problem. We also have pedestrians. We, they could be jumping out. They could be doing stupid things. So we have intersections also. That's a big hazard trap. You know, people turning left in front of us, all these different things. Uh, make sure we wear full gear. So make sure your gear actually goes all the way to the, to the cuff of your glove. Make sure you don't really have any exposed skin. That's how I like to operate. Let's go ahead and start operating that way too. So we're gonna move forward just a little bit. And we also have another hazard here. So we have these, uh, the tram rails or whatever you wanna call it. Um, they are a little bit slippery, but these ones look pretty narrow. So our tires will be able to go over them pretty easily. Sometimes though, you're gonna have really wide ones and that's gonna really mess up how you're gonna ride and can get your front tire, uh, not necessarily trapped inside of it, but loss of traction. So be careful of that. Um, this is how you wanna do it. You wanna ride in between them. And then if you have to make any massive movements, you go across them pretty quick. So we have a bunch of people lining up, okay? So that's typical. Now right here, this is where we start thinking and then we start noticing. This is what I want you to notice. I'm gonna go ahead and go back just a little bit. So we have this intersection to the left, okay? We also have intersections to the right. When these cars are backed up like this, think of that intersection. So right here, you wanna grab stuff. And you will do this when you start riding. You're gonna grab things. You're gonna grab some weird things. It's pretty cool. So you notice there's a little bit of a white vehicle. Now that's something you wanna look at. You wanna go, you're riding, you're like, okay, boom. White vehicle, okay. That means there's intersection, that means there's possibility. I have a bad line of sight when I go past this vehicle right here. This is where we have bad line of sight. Okay, now we're cautious, now we're cautious. Think about, you know, during Halloween time or whenever you wanna do this, uh, you go into a haunted house. You're not running around corners, are you? You're like, okay, where's the monster? Where is this happening? And that's what you start to do when you're in that situation. Why is that? You're scared of something popping out, right, and getting you, right? We are riding motorcycles, everybody. This right here, we have a corner. We don't want cars to come and get us. So treat them as monsters, treat them as you know whatever, and start doing that. So right here, not necessarily like creep down to like no speed and you're like, okay, what's going around it? Do it at, uh, let's, you know, when we're in the haunted house, we're either running or we are, you know, slowing down, but we're still walking. Okay, so think about that as, as an example or a metaphor or whatever for motorcycling. So if we're going 45 or 35 miles an hour, maybe creep down to about 25. So we're going sprinting speed, let's say sprinting speed at 35 miles an hour, walking speed is about 20, 25 miles an hour. So we're just kind of slowing down, getting ready for that swerve, getting ready for those brakes. Because if we slow down from 45 to 20, 25, that is a huge massive difference between having to brake at 45 or braking at 20, 25. Does that make sense? Okay, I want you to be able to brake very quickly at 20, 25 versus 45, because that can be that stop, total stopping distance problem. So right here, we're gonna come up to this, and he did this editing right here. Um, but right here, it's like we have that bad line of sight, bad line of sight, bad line of sight. Boom, soon as that creeps out, this is now orange mode. So let's scroll back just a little bit. And about right here is when I'm in yellow mode. And then when we start coming up to here, it's like, okay, bad line of sight. I can't see around, now I'm in orange mode. So orange mode, orange mode, orange mode, orange mode. Definitely orange mode, boom, I see this vehicle right here. Now I'm in red. Okay, so this is red mode. Red is action, red is doing something, red is going. It's not necessarily red is stop. Red is doing something, either swerve, brake, brakes, then swerve, swerve, then brake, whatever it is you have to do. So that's why we're in that position. So he's not gonna stop. This person right here, this, this car driver is gunning it to get out of the path of travel of this vehicle up here, because that is who they saw. They didn't see us, and that's fine, whatever it is. I wish more people would see us. 
ne it's not necessarily who's at fault. It's more like I want to take responsibility for my own safety, and that's what I'm going to be doing. So we can either stop or swerve. Now we have an escape path to the left. Hopefully we did head checks, did a full 360 uh, every so often, so we know where we're at in space and time. That's the whole point of uh, situation awareness, and I talk about that in the OODA loop. So having to orient yourself is part of the O O D A. Orient is part of that, so you have to orient yourself, and then you have to decide. You have to do all these different things, okay? So if you want to check that video out, it's really good. It's part two of my situation awareness PowerPoint. Um, I'm going to be doing these PowerPoint stuff uh, for patrons only uh, in the near future. So if you want to be a patron, it's only $2 a month. You're going to get four presentations a week, and it really does help with the channel at the same time. So we're going to be moving towards here. So right here, you got an escape path to the left, or you can break. Two of those things, fundamental skills you need to learn. So right here, he's going to go ahead and swerve. So you see how he's starting to reach for that front break. Now, this is where... Uh, training and competency really comes into play is that you want to do one or the other. You don't want to do both. You really don't, especially that front break. That front break can really uh, mess your day up if you squeeze it too hard in the middle of a swerve. So he's going to, that was so close. That's really close. And this is what's very important about these close calls is that we can uh, minimize a lot of these by, you know, when we were going around that bus or that tram, it's like we have a bad line of sight. We need to look, look, look we can prevent a lot of these things because we can be going from 45 to 25. So very good that he swerved out of the way, but remember, um, and it's a very hard, it's very hard. I know you guys are going to have trouble doing it and even I'll have trouble doing it. Try not to look at the object because that's really going to mess up your swerve. You're trying to swerve to the left and you're looking to the right. Well, it's putting body weight to the right and that's going to cause some problems. So when you swerve, you go into it and then come back. Okay. You just have to make that action. And this is where practice, 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 practice comes into play in a parking lot with realistic speeds if you possibly can. And what I like to do at realistic speeds is that when I'm driving down the road and I see like a, a, a tar snake or a pothole or something like a repaired pothole, whatever it is, I like to pretend I'm coming at it, boom, swerving around it. And I play around like that, make sure there's no cops around, they might think you're doing dangerous driving, but um, I like to do that. That way I get some practice at 45, 55, even interstate speeds, I like to do that. So it's gonna really help you out and get you familiarized and bond with your bike too at the same time. So he's gonna move around this vehicle and luckily he was able to dodge it. So you notice right now, this is the position he swerved into. So this is basically lane position one, but this is a great opportunity to look at exactly where he's at because we have the tram uh, lines basically. So he's basically right on it or a little bit to the right of the left side of the tram. So let's go back to where he originally was before this incident. So he's in this position. So he's roughly in the very middle of the whole lane, lane position two, in between those two tram spots. So it really was only one lane position of a swerve. Now that's all you need in this situation, but do some more, learn your bike more, get a good swerve in. I would try my best to do a swerve from this lane position all the way to this lane position because you really need to have that bigger uh, of, a, of a swerve when it comes to a vehicle wanting to gun it out in front of you. This is one of those things, uh, this is, I believe is in the UK, so they're on the other side of the road, but this is one of those things where cars turning left in the United States is where they really hit you. So this is a car turning right in front of us uh, in the UK or when it's all switched around, okay? So this is the deadliest thing for motorcyclists is vehicles turning left or vehicles turning right in this situation in front of us. Same thing with curves. So right here, good, a nice swerve. We're right in the middle. Swerve, swerve, swerve and now he's right here in this position. Try your best to get more over, but his training is what saved him, um, the physical skills. Now we can prevent a lot of these things with the situational part. So thank you so much to my patrons for making this possible. Like I said, guys, if you wanna see the PowerPoint stuff, make sure you click the link below, but also become a patron. There's a link to the left of your screen to become a patron, $2 a month, and it supports the channel so much. I really appreciate it. With that said, I hope you guys ride safe, be safe, and I'll be seeing you around.